What's up, guys? My name is Tristan from thecpapstore.ca, and today we're going to be talking about what happens to your body when you don't use CPAP. I'm making this video so you can send it to a loved one or somebody that you know who snores loudly, or if you just need a little better understanding of what's happening to your body to motivate you to continue using your CPAP machine. Now, to give you some backstory, the data that we're going to be looking at today is actually my own father's data. So this is the data that he received from his at-home sleep test um, from a watch pad machine that I gave him, but there are many other sleep test machines that you can use. Now, this data is kind of near and dear to my heart because for years, my dad did not want to use CPAP. He wanted to avoid CPAP. He thought it was going to be cumbersome, annoying. And that is crazy because his own son is me, Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. But that just shows you how hard it is and difficult it is for some people who, you know, see the cumbersome nature of a CPAP machine uh, to get over that barrier and think that maybe it's actually something that they need. Now, after we look at this data, we're going to understand why he needed it and basically show you what is happening to a majority of you who also use CPAP machine. Now, often we hear about all the negatives that sleep apnea brings, or we'll hear news stories like athletes dying in their sleep due to a heart attack. Usually, I'm going to spoil it for everyone, that's sleep apnea. You know those random athletes or those random celebrities you always hear in the news died in their sleep due to a heart condition almost always is triggered by sleep apnea, right? Especially if they're younger. Now we hear a lot of these stories and we hear a lot of the bad things about sleep apnea, not breathing, heart attack, all this type of stuff, but no one really understands it. And even if you go to your sleep clinic, they don't really explain it to you all that much. They might tell you that your AHI is high and that's all you really know. But what does that mean? Let's answer it now. Okay, so let's dive into the sleep report here. We got the start time, the end time. The total sleep time, seven hours and 19 minutes for this patient. So your RDI stands for respiratory disturbance index. This is how many times you were disturbed in the night for anything respiratory related. So this patient was disturbed 225 times for some sort of respiratory issue in their sleep. AHI is your apnea hypopnea index. This here refers to your total events. So this is 208. So this patient had 208 apneas during this night, which means that their airway or their tongue, whatever, closed, so they stopped breathing and had that apnea. These apneas staying at 3% here means that their oxygen fell by 3%. Up next, we have the ODI 3%. This is your oxygen desaturation index, so this is a little bit lower than your AHI 3%. The reason why is because this is has to be when your oxygen falls 3% or desaturates by 3% at least, uh, for 10 seconds, whereas this doesn't have to be 10 seconds. Next, you have AHIC. This is your central sleep apnea is 3%. So this happened 12 times. You have your percentage of chain Stokes respiration. So this is basically um, irregular breathing patterns. So this patient did not have any here. We have AHI 4%. So their oxygen fell at least by 4% uh, during these apneas. So this happened 119 times. And your ODI, so 10 seconds or more of oxygen desaturation. Uh, this has happened 78 times during this night here. Okay, so down here is the most important thing, and it simplifies everything. This is your apneas per hour. So your AHI, apnea hypopnea index, is your apneas per hour. You can see this graph is really simple here. So if you have anything less than five, you have mild or no sleep apnea. Five to 15 is mild sleep apnea. 15 to 30 is moderate sleep apnea. And more than 30 is severe sleep apnea. So what does this mean? This 28.8 or wherever you fall on this graph is how many apneas you have in one single hour. So this patient here on average had 28.8 apneas every hour. So every couple minutes they're having an apnea. Moving on to the graphs here. This is a little more exciting. So we have the respiratory events up here. This is all the apneas and any respiratory event throughout the night. We have the snore and body position. So we have the sitting position, the prone position, which is stomach, left, right, and supine position, which is your back. So here you can see uh, this line follows, basically just follow this line and you see how you're sleeping. So this patient was on the right side here, then you follow the line and they were on the left side, then they're back on the right side. You can see a bunch of rolling around here. So they went from left to back to left to back to left to back to left to back. This orange here is your decibels. This is your snoring meter. So you can see decibels here. Okay, the next graph is oxygen saturation. How much oxygen is saturated in your blood? The normal amount is going to be 100%. So 98 to 100% is normal uh, oxygen saturation. Uh, 95 to 97% would be tolerable. 90 to 94% would be decreased oxygen. You could totally 
feel it if you're at 90 94%, you'd feel out of breath. 90% oxygen or below is going to be low oxygen. So this is going to be your area where uh, if you're at the hospital, you might be there already, they're going to put you on oxygen. Below 80% is going to be severe hypopnea. Okay, this is go into the ER, you're probably going to be hospitalized at this point. And then below 70% is going to be very dangerous. You're going to be either at the hospital or in the hospital ASAP. The doctors are going to make sure that you're being attended uh, right away if you're below 70%. So let's look at this graph here. So as you can see with this patient, uh, typically they're kind of at that 95, 97% range, which is should be somewhat normal. But here you can see there's a lot of apneas going on, a lot of desaturation. They're going below 90%. They're going below 90%. Here they already go, they go past almost uh, 80% all the way down to maybe 60, 79% or something like that. Obviously these spikes are for short periods of time. This is not long periods of time and that's totally different. But the fact that this person is getting down to these mid 80s, low 80s seems probably on a regular basis is pretty dangerous. Okay, so we have this pulse rate here. This is the next graph, the BPM. So as you can see, this patient has fairly regular beats per minute around the 60 to 80 range, uh, very normal for the age this patient was at. But uh, we have some big spikes here and it's more about the irregularity. So it's the fact that the heart rate is jumping around a lot. You're having these big spikes all the way up to 120 beats per minute. This is like someone light jogging. So these big spikes are definitely not easy on the body. Okay, so next we have the PAT amp. So this is your peripheral arterial tone. Um, this is not something that you're going to be really reading. It might be something your doctor might be looking at. And then we have the wake and sleep stages here. So you just follow this line similar to the body position. So the person was awake here. Then we follow this line. They were in light sleep down here, deep sleep down here. Then this red here, that's REM. So you just kind of follow the line. Okay, so now that we know what all this means, we can start to paint the picture of what happened throughout this night. So this person here started on their right side. They kind of were either talking, maybe talking or snoring right off the bat here. Um, you can see that loudness here, but they're on their right side. On their right side here, we have very little apneas. Things are pretty good. Perhaps their muscles haven't fully relaxed yet, so they're not getting any apneas yet. As you can see, they jump into light sleep and then deep sleep here. Their oxygen saturation is pretty good. Okay, so then what happens? Look at this. Apnea happened right here. What happened at this apnea? So they rolled to their left side, and all of a sudden, they had an apnea. Okay, so what happened when they had an apnea? Well, they kept on having apneas, and now their blood oxygen saturation is going down to unhealthy levels. What's happening because of that? Well, now their heart rate has to jump up. Their heart rate is jumping up to 80, 90 beats per minute, okay? Uh, they're awake here, they're in REM sleep, uh, they're in light sleep and REM, then they're awake, they're in light sleep, and look at this, they're rolling around. Right side, uh, they're back, and they're back on their right, then they're back on their back, then they're on their stomach for a bit. So there's rolling around, there's apneas, there's low oxygen, their heart rate's going crazy, not very relaxing. Then they settle back down on their right side. Look, their right side, so their right side seems pretty good for whatever reason. The right side is pretty good. They're staying on the right side. Again, we're starting to see some apneas. Apneas are building up. Apneas are building up. Um, we got beats per minute here, somewhat stable. But then they have tons of apneas. Why? Because they jumped on their back. So they went on their back. Now they're getting tons of apneas. And now again, things are going crazier. Their beats per minute is going crazy. Look at their auction. Now it's dipping down to 90%, dipping down to 85, 84% down here. And look how much they're rolling around. Apneas, rolling around, low oxygen, uh, REM sleep kind of moving around as well, awake here, and beats per minute, it's kind of going crazy. Now let's look at this one. Again, lots of snoring. Look at all this orange, lots of snoring, lots of rolling around, okay? Lots of apneas, lots of oxygen desaturation all the way to 80% here not very healthy. And look at their beats per minute. The beats per minute go all the way up to 120. So this person should be sleeping, relaxing, enjoying their night, preparing for the next day. And their heart rate's going like they're running a marathon. Their oxygen saturation is like they're at the top of a mountain. And they're snoring. So I bet their wife can't really sleep either. And they said they had to wake up and use the bathroom at around 5 a.m. And they just could not get back to sleep. Okay, let's look at this. 5 a.m. What happened here? They're awake here at 5 a.m. And look, they're awake from about 5 a.m. here all the way to about 5.45. And they're complaining. They were just like, oh, I just can't get back to bed. 
I couldn't sleep. Well, I just woke up. I had to pee a couple of times or whatever. You know, I, I just kept on waking up. Look, their oxygen desaturation is at 80%, is at 85%. Their heart rate is going crazy. So they just thought they had to use the washroom and they just couldn't sleep for whatever reason. But in reality, they are going in and out of sleep. They're just having such crazy apneas and their heart rate is going so crazy that they keep on waking up and they just think, oh, I must be, you know, it must be a tough night for me because I can't fall asleep. When in reality, they actually have a uh, severe slash moderate sleep apnea. So that's it for the video today, guys. I hope this video painted a better picture of what sleep apnea is and what's actually happening when you sleep. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, share it, or even consider subscribing. Take care, guys.